Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this adorable crochet pumpkin, so stick around. For this project, you'll need a worsted weight yarn. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver yarn that I got at Walmart. I really like this orange color. Next, you'll need a size 5mm or a size H crochet hook, a yarn needle with an eye large enough for your yarn to pass through, and scissors. I got these scissors at Hobby Lobby. And you're going to need some polyfill and some black material or felt and hot or super glue. Well, let's get going. All right, so first we're going to start with a slip knot. And then we're going to chain 27. Once you have your chain of 27, we'll be working with half double crochets down the chain. Your first half double crochet will be made in the third chain from the hook or into the space that I'm showing you here. So let's go ahead and make our first half double crochet. And then we're just gonna go ahead and make half double crochets in each space all the way down the chain. And you should have exactly a count of 12 stitches. Okay, so now we have our entire row of half double crochets. We're gonna chain two, and then we're gonna turn our work and work along the other side. So chain two, and then turn your work. Now we're gonna work half double crochets all the way down this side. We're gonna be working in the back loops only, and we'll be doing this in all of the rows that we make. So when I say back loops, I'm talking about these loops back here. Instead of having two loops on top of your hook, you're only going to work through that back loop there. So we are going to avoid the very first space where the chain is coming out of, and we're going to make our first half double crochet in the space next to it. Now remember, we're only going to be working in the back loops, so go ahead and make your first half double crochet in that back loop, and then make one half double crochet in every space all the way down, and I'll see you at the end of the row. All right, so here we are at the end. I've got another one I'm gonna do here, but I really suggest going back down to the beginning of the row and then counting every one of your stitches to make sure that you have exactly the right amount of stitches, otherwise the sides of your work are not going to be straight. So go ahead and go back down, count them all out. And right now I have 11, and here at the very end, there's a little loop back there. You're gonna to wanna to pick it up and make your 12th stitch. And now we're gonna go ahead and chain two. And like we did the last time, we chain two and turn our work. And down this row, we're going to be working in the back loops only again and skip that first space where that chain is coming out of right there and work in the space next to it, in the back loops only. 
and let's do this here make the first half double crochet and then go ahead and just work all of your half double crochets down and I'll see you at the end of the row And just like on the last row, we want to make sure to pick up that back loop at this very last stitch that we have so that we can maintain 12 stitches in our rows. Sometimes they're a little hard <laughs> to get to. You might have to finagle it a little bit, but you'll get it. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and chain two and we're going to work half double crochets down this side working in the back loops only. We're going to go ahead and skip that first spot and in the second spot make the first half double crochet and then half double crochets all the way down and then I will meet you at the end of the row. And here we are coming to the end of the row and please go back and make sure that you have exactly 11 stitches and now we're going to make the 12th one in this very last stitch don't miss that one that's very important and right here I'm going to show you about how long I think you guys should make your rectangle that you're going to need so about where my hands are here um, right about there we want to have as many rows as we can that when we fold it over we actually create what looks like a square so go ahead and make your rows I think that in mine I had about 22 rows you can go up to 24 rows if you need to as well okay well here we are at the end I'm working on the very last few stitches of my very last row here I believe that I have exactly 20 two rows in this one. I'm going to finish it off. Make sure that we get that very last stitch. You can see that my rows are straight. My edges are straight. Everything is straight. So here is our panel and what we're going to do is lay it flat and then I want you to fold it over and make sure that it looks as much like a square as possible. And then what we're going to do is sew up the edge here. We're going to weave around the bottom here and then we're going to stuff the top and then we'll go ahead and weave that up and we're finished and now it's time to snip off the yarn and then you probably need about 15 inches you're going to be working with it so and go ahead you can use your crochet hook to go through the loop and just grab the yarn and pull it through if you want or you can do what i'm doing here which is what i chose to do i don't know why but anyway so we're going to go ahead next and get our darning needle all right, so once you have your yarn in hand, go ahead and thread your needle or yarn your needle, however you want to say that. And we're going to get busy with sewing up the side. So what I've chosen to do is just to pick up the other side there, pull the yarn through to connect it, and then I'm just going to go back and forth. I'm not actually doing a whip stitch. I'm just going to go back and forth through the uh, loops of the, the edges here and then just go back and forth as you know, and getting up underneath as many of the loops as possible um, to make sure that it's nice and straight and to make sure that it doesn't gather in spots. I've done that before and it's not fun. So just go ahead and sew it up the best that you can and don't make it too tight. Don't pull on it if you don't have to. And um, we'll just go ahead and work this all the way down. And then at the end, when I go through this last part, I like to take both yarns and then tie them together. Oh. 
Okay, so now we've gotten all that done, we're going to go ahead and start weaving up the top. So use your needle, pick up some loops here and there. I try to go under uh, areas where maybe the yarn is sticking out a little bit further. Um, that kind of keeps the weave a little bit more even. But go ahead and weave around to the end. Don't tug on your yarn just yet. We're going to do that at the end. Okay, so here we are at the end of the weaving. And then what I like to do after I take my needle out of my yarn, I like to get both of the strands of yarn and tie it up. And I double tie it like this and pull it down really nice and tight, as tight as I can get it without tearing the yarn and then knot it again. And then I'm just gonna leave these strands inside because we're about to fill it up with polyfill and we're not gonna see those strands. So go ahead and grab your polyfill and we'll start stuffing our pumpkin. So I like to grab about a handful and a half to two handfuls of polyfill and then I like to break it apart because it's much easier to get your needle through the polyfill when you're trying to make the indents on the top and the bottom of your pumpkin and I'll show you what I'm talking about later. But anyway, so I take it and I pull it apart and then I just fill the pumpkin with it until the pumpkin is pretty full but not over full. I like to be able to pack it down just a little bit so that it keeps it nice and solid for me and it doesn't collapse and things like that. So go ahead, fill the pumpkin with your polyfill and then I'll show you what we do next. All right, so here I actually am deciding to use an extra long needle for this part of the project. You don't have to use one, but I like it because it just makes it easier for me. I'm gonna go ahead and put the yarn into this needle here. And then it's gonna be used to weave up the top and then to finish off the project where I make the indents on the top and the bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna take both sides of this yarn and we're gonna pull and tug until we get that space closed. Now I'm gonna put my stem kind of inside of there a little bit, so I want a little bit of a space, just big enough to get that stem down inside. But go ahead and tie it up. And then next what we're gonna do is pick up the needle. And this is why I like the long needle. I'm gonna push it through from one side to the other and it's gonna pop out here in a second, and there it is. And then you're just gonna pull it through and tug. And then you're gonna push it through again, um, but this time you're gonna go under maybe a different space just so that your yarn doesn't come out. And then push it through the top of this side here. And then that way you can indent the other end. And then after you do that, that should be secure enough. And then you'll just take both strands of the yarn and tie it up. And this little tie should nestle down nicely inside of that uh, indent that you have there. And then what I like to do is take the strand that's on the needle, push it through the pumpkin, through the polyfill, and then pop it out, pull it off the needle, and then just snip it. Now that it's in the polyfill, it's not gonna come out and then I'm gonna do it to the other one as well. So go ahead and do that, and then we will decorate our pumpkins. And now I just like to take my fingers and just kind of shape the pumpkin and 
push down into the indents both sides just kind of get it the shape that I want it to be and then after I do that then I go ahead and decorate all right so I'm going to get out my trusty glue gun here and I have some twine and that's what I'm going to use to tie onto the stem and um, then I've got these really cute cinnamon sticks that I got on Amazon and that cinnamon stick is going to make our stem so the next thing that I like to do is get out a cutter of some kind that allows me to cut those cinnamon sticks in half because you can see they're a little big so I get out my cutter and then I just snip it in half it makes a little bit of a mess so <laughs> but it's totally worth it because it just it just looks better so now I'm getting all that stuff out of the way I'm gonna go ahead and uh, model the stem here for you and get out my hot glue gun and we're gonna need a pretty decent size bead of yarn in here I want to make sure this thing doesn't come out and it shouldn't because it's hot glue against yarn and wood so it should not be a problem um, and just press it down in there hold it for a little bit and let it dry on there Okay, so now we're going to get out the twine or whatever you have decided to use to tie onto your stem. If you want to use ribbon, that's great. I've seen some really cute pumpkins with ribbons on them, so just saying. Here we're going to go ahead and use twine, and I want to make sure that I have a long enough piece because I have tied these on before and not had enough twine and have had to snip off a whole other piece. So make yours a little bit extra long because you're gonna probably need it. And then if you need to snip some of it off, you can. And right here, what I really like to do is wind it around the stem and then just tie it on. So I really like that, it's really cute. And I am gonna go ahead and snip off um, the ends here a little bit just to take some of that off because it is a little bit too long in the end. So, but I think that this came out super adorable. And in the picture, as I showed you before, there's also a jack-o'-lantern style. Uh, what I did is I used black felt and I cut out eyes and a nose and a mouth and I just hot glued those onto here instead of putting on uh, the twine or ribbon I went ahead and just you know put on a face so right here I'm just doing some touch-ups to make it the way I want it to be make it look how I like it and um, that's what I've got and I really really think he's adorable I like the color I like the color of the twine um, and I think that it offsets that orange really well and the brown stem as well. And as I mentioned before, here's our cute little jack-o'-lantern. And this one I just used black felt and hot glued on some eyes and a nose and a mouth that I cut out myself. And uh, there you go. So that's it for this video. If you like this project today, make sure to hit the like button. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and then select the all tab so that you get all my videos in the future. Until the next video, have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.